Hello everyone, uh, my name is Phil Hacking and I'm Head of Maths at Hills Road Sixth Form College. Uh, so I'm just going to share with you a short presentation which just goes through uh, lots of information about the maths course, uh, how it's made up, what it contains and just some information you might find useful if you hopefully come and choose to do maths at Hills Road. So yeah, this is all about an introduction to uh, what A-level maths is like at Hills Road. So first of all, uh, why you might want to study maths. So uh, math skills are, are very highly prized. I'm sure I'm sure this has been mentioned to you many times before, uh, but employers are you know, really keen on you uh, having certain skills that you get from studying maths. So skills such as problem solving, you know, the ability to step back and really think about how you might progress through a complex situation that obviously has lots of implications in real life, uh, skills such as resilience, because they, they know they're aware of how difficult maths is and that if you've managed to succeed at it, you must have developed lots of resilience skills. Uh, you know, working in groups to problem solve. Uh, so there, there are a few of the skills that employers would would value. Universities are on a similar theme. There's, there's many, there's many courses at university that really, really value maths or some will actually insist on maths, but even the courses that don't insist on maths, they'll really value that as an A-level because you've because of the skills that I mentioned before that you must have you must have to have succeeded in maths. Uh, also, an important one is earnings. Uh, there's been there's been various studies about this over the years, but generally it's been found that students who've got A-level maths have generally earned more than those that haven't. There's, there's been many studies, but there was one in particular from 2011, I think, at the London School of Economics. They found out that on average, you can expect to earn 10% more <laughs> for your, out your lifetime if you've studied A-level maths, which obviously is, is very nice to have. So uh, next kind of point is that maths is at the heart of many existing and potential future industries, many that you're probably not even aware of. So lots of computer games and graphics rely very heavily on on kind of vector and matrix geometry. Uh, so Call of Duty, for example, relies very heavily on vectors. You probably studied vectors at GCSE. You probably never thought that it had that kind of implication, but it does. Internet search engines basically work by solving systems of simultaneous equations and using them in matrices. So if you've done simultaneous equations at school and thought, how is that useful? Well, Google in particular basically uses use works by solving systems of simultaneous equations and lots of statistical modeling. I'm sure you, 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 this comes up in the news all the time, but statisticians are always producing models and those models are basically using maths to generate them. So lots of predictions about what's going to happen in the future, which informs government policy and informs company policies is basically done on math statistical modeling. The most important thing I think on this slide though is that you, you enjoy maths for its own sake. I put that in the bottom with an exclamation mark. You really do have to enjoy just doing maths because although maths does have a lot of it, real life applications, you're not going to necessarily know that at the time when you're studying it. And a lot of the time you're just going to be studying, you know, rigorous algebraic proof and manipulation. And you've got to enjoy doing that. You know, if you don't enjoy working through, you know, a long 10 line maths proof or a long 10 line bit of algebraic manipulation then you, you know you're not you're not going to enjoy the maths course because that's what we're going to be doing most of the time so if you really really get a buzz out of solving problems and getting them right then that is the most important thing for the moment so what will you study in a-level math so as i've just i've just mentioned on the last slide about algebra two-thirds of the course is what we call pure maths and pure maths essentially is just algebraic skills but we, we apply algebraic skills to lots of different contexts so we'll start with you know things you've done at gcse like quadratic equations simultaneous equations but we also branch out into some new stuff such as trigonometry now you're probably thinking you've done trigonometry before but the trigonometry that we move on to at A-level is much different. So it's still, you know, sine, cosine, tangent, but we are solving trigonometric equations and working with trigonometric identities. So we're following an algebraic approach to it rather than kind of a 
looking at triangles. We also apply it to sequences and some brand new ideas such as calculus, but basically two thirds of the course is working through algebra. So you really do have to like algebra, be confident with it, enjoy doing it. One third of the course is applied maths and applied maths is basically made up equally into statistics and mechanics. So you'll be very familiar, I'm sure, with what statistics is, you know, data handling, working out uh, results about data sets such as mean, standard deviation, drawing conclusions about it. We also move on, we do a lot of statistical modelling at A-level that I mentioned kind of on the last slide. So we try and fit models to, to situations and then make predictions about those models. So that kind of is, is your first step really into the kind of modelling that you might do in a future career or in, in a degree. And then mechanics very much links with physics. So uh, we learn about Newton's laws of motion, forces, uh, project, projecting things through the air, uh, trains carrying carriages. We look at acceleration and forces that are happening. So if you do do physics, it fits well with physics, but you don't have to do physics to, to do well at mechanics because we're very much following a mathematical approach. So whereas physics deals, deals with the theory of what's going on, we really form and solve equations. So it's there's not actually that much theory you need to know about. It's really can you form and solve equations? So in terms of uh, support in maths, we have our own full time math support assistant. Uh, so they work in, in the maths office 9 till 3.30 every day where they can do individual support, small group support. So they're very much kind of a part of call that you can always go to. It's always an ex-student who's, who's just very recently left, so knows what it's like to study A-level, but has also got an A-star in the subject, so should be able to provide you with all the help you need. We also have dedicated support pages on, on Microsoft Teams, so we're very lucky in the math department that we've got, uh, I think, 20 members of staff. So we have we have pages where you can post questions at any time. And because we have so many staff, they're more than happy to help you answer the questions, invite you to do a, a Teams, a call over Teams, if that's what you like, or invite you in for extra support. But you can expect to get an answer very quickly. Normally, within a matter of a few minutes, you'll get an answer to your question. And they'll encourage you to ask more questions if it's still not made sense. We have lunchtime surgeries as well, so you can pop in and get face to face help. If you don't like using online support, you can get face to face help from a member of staff. They run pretty much every lunchtime. And we also have peer mentoring schemes. So in year one, if you, uh, you can ask to get a second year student to mentor you and they can meet you once or twice a week. Uh, it's good for them because obviously they're going over first year things as well, but they can they'll be very much happy to help you with any kind of first year content that you are uh, struggling with or just not sure about or just want a bit more confidence and support. They know what it's like, obviously they're a current student, so they can help guide you kind of through the journey. So I think my message here is please, uh, please be aware there is loads of support in maths. We understand how difficult a subject it is and it's also a building block subject. You know, you, if you don't understand one bit, you can't progress to the next bit. So we're very much support is very much a passion of ours and giving you all the support you need so you can be successful. So how does assessment take place in math? So uh, in terms of external assessment to get your grades, if you do math, you have three two hour written exams and at the end of year two, the th how it works in A level maths is your first exam is pure maths only. So first two hour exam is just pure maths, two hours, 100 marks. The second exam is half pure, half mechanics. So 50 marks pure, 50 marks mechanics. The third exam is half pure, half statistics. So 50 marks pure, 50 marks statistics. So out of your 300 marks, 200 of them are algebra marks essentially. So I said before, you've got to be confident with your algebra. 200 out of 300 marks are algebra. 50 marks is statistics. 50 marks is mechanics. They're all calculator allowed and they're all at the end of year two. So you don't have to worry about a non-calculator exam anymore. In further maths, I'm not, I'm not really talking about further maths too much in this presentation, but if you are interested in further maths, that also has three two-hour exams at the end of year two. 
but I'm sure more will come on that on a different presentation. So that's external assessment. In terms of internal assessment, we set your homework each week, which you have to you have to complete, mark yourself, and submit online for us to check. Okay, so every week you'll have an assignment to do, submit online, mark it yourself, so you know kind of how you're doing, and you're getting kind of instant feedback. We also, however, have teacher assessed homework once every half term. So every half term, a teacher will mark your work and give you written feedback. And you also get tests once a half term so we can track your progress, encourage you to get extra support if you need it, try and help you see where your gaps are and give you kind of an idea of where you're currently working at and what you need to do next. So in terms of extra opportunities in, in maths, we have this, the Senior UK Maths Challenge. I'm sure many of you have done the maths challenges at school. This is the one designed for A-level students. And if you do particularly well in that as well, you can progress on to the Maths Olympiad, which every year we get a few students who do progress on to that. We also have the Maths Team Challenge. Now, there are limited spaces here, but you can express an interest and you, you may be able to take part. In 2020, Hills Road Maths Department won the Team Challenge. We also have uh, Maths Inspiration Events and Maths Fest. These are trips and we you basically go and watch lectures which have fun talks by people who have used maths in their careers. They talk about lots of interesting things they've done and how they've used maths. They're very fun and engaging if you are interested in maths. If you are thinking about progressing on to do maths at one of the top universities such as Oxford and Cambridge, you'll have to do entrance exams and we have dedicated support sessions for you if you are doing that. So we have a teacher Mr Johnson who works with small group of students every week who are progressing on to maths at top end universities and we also offer, offer enrichment sessions usually at lunchtime so these are not kind of examined but you can just come along do some extra fun maths puzzles if you really like that kind of thing just work with some other really interested students in doing some kind of fun maths. In terms of student performance uh, so this slide compares A star to B in maths compared to national. So you can see A star to B, we, we get around 73% of our students achieve them those grades in maths compared to a national average of 63%. So you can see it's 10 percentage points higher, which is quite a lot. And A star to E, which is pass at A level, we are again this time slightly above national average, but almost all of our students achieve a pass mark in A level maths. So you can you can feel very confident that you are going to come up with come out with something. In terms of destinations, I mentioned earlier that you know maths leads on to lots of different careers and university courses. So you can see down, down the right hand side here the courses that our students go on to. So some of them are prob you probably expected, like maths, economics, physics, but also history, architecture, you know, engineering, filmmaking, even so lots and lots of courses and careers are opened up by doing maths. It's not just a case of going into STEM subjects. It's a really valued course for lots of different careers. And you can see that most of our students, 93% do go on to university, but also a few have used their maths in employment and apprenticeships. So uh, that concludes the presentation. Uh, thank you for listening and hopefully I'll be able to talk to you further about Hills Road Maths.